Welcome everyone to section number four. This is tangent planes and linear approximations. We're just going to get a little bit of an introduction to these things. I'm going to give you the definition of a tangent plane and linearization of the surfaces. Uh, and we're going to determine right, uh, an equation for the tangent line and the linearization. Uh, so that's our main goal for this here video. So, as promised, the tangent plane to a surface, z equals some function of x's and y's, so this is a nice and explicit surface here, uh, and we need through a specific point, just like we used to have tangent lines at a point. Right? So a tangent plane at a point is defined to be the plane that contains both the tangent lines, c1 and c2, to the curves of intersection between the surface and x equals x naught and y equals y naught, respectively. This is a little bit confusing, I admit it, right? So let me show you what we're talking about here. So I went ahead and I graphed, well actually I just opened up beforehand this Monroe 3D calc plotter and we have our kind of standard surface that it always seems to graph for us. And I wanted to show you, uh, so right now it's, uh, I already clicked the button, but if you click this one right here, show and hide 2D trace plane, well then you can kind of move this point around and it kind of moves a point over here, but we actually have some options. So if I go ahead and click here, for instance, we can go ahead and show the FY trace slash tangent line. So if I go ahead and click this, for instance, so let's say that this is my point right here. This is where I would like to have a tangent plane through. So here's my point. Uh, it happens to be the point 1.16, that's my x value, and 1.2, that's my y value. And you can see that I have a curve here right, a curve, and then I have the tangent line to that curve. So when it says, right, all these fancy words, the C1 and the C2, right, these are the curves of intersection between the function, and then when one is held constant, so in this case you can see we have our x values, they're constant, right, the y's changing, here's my y's, they're changing, but the x's are held constant, the x's are held at this x naught value, in this case, 1.16. So okay, so that may be my C1 for instance, and then, oops, ah, wrong one, there we go. Uh, we can also show, instead of the uh, Fy trace, we could do the Fx trace, and then this is where the Ys are held constant, and the X gets to move, right? And so you get this other curve, and then again you have the tangent line at that curve. For some reason this one seems to be maybe a little bit right through that um, surface. But if you'd like we can go up here and actually I think this button, yeah, toggle transparency, you can make the surface a little bit transparent and you can see, okay, that's the tangent line where the other direction is held constant, right? Our y value is held constant. And okay, so you have this curve intersection, right? These things intersect each other. So again, curves of intersection between uh, z, the surface itself, x equals x0 and y equals y0 respectively. And so if it contains both of these tangent lines, both this one and, uh, let's see, this is the other one, right? If it contains both of these, then the claim is we get a nice tangent plane. So one of these here up here show the tangent plane at this point. Quick. And there we go. So that is the tangent plane to the surface at this point, right? It's just like a tangent line, it's kind of, it just barely skims the surface at this point. And, but because it's a surface instead of, you know, a line, uh, right, we get a plane in this case, a nice tangent plane. So that's what a tangent plane looks like. Okay, so I hope that this has helped uh, you maybe understand the definition a little bit. So now we would like to be able to calculate out, right? Okay, I have the idea down, but what's the formula for the tangent plane. So let's go back here, ah, wrong button. There we go. Let's go back here and theorem 4.2 is what we want. So suppose we have F with con continuous partial derivatives, right? Partial derivatives back from our uh, section three days. An equation then of the tangent plane to our surface, Z equals some function of X's and Y's at this point, X naught, Y naught, Z naught, is given by and we have, it goes z minus the z point, so z sub zero or z naught, is equal to, and we have the partial derivative with respect to x evaluated at x naught, y naught, times x minus x naught, 
plus the partial derivative with respect to y evaluated at this point, x naught, y naught, times y minus y naught, or y sub zero. All right, so this is a theorem, right? The theorem is, here is the equation of the tangent plane, but theorems have proofs, right? You don't have to take my word for it. We can actually prove it mathematically. And so here is the proof. I wanted to just kind of talk through it really fast uh, just to show you that, again, these things can be proven. So again, from 12.5, we know that planes look a certain way. So we want to do a plane, right? Go back to our definition here. We want a plane that contains these curves, right? Curves of intersection between our surface and x equals x sub zero, y equals y sub zero, right? Uh, so these should be coming into this proof. So, okay, we'll start with a plane. And let's go ahead and divide through by the c. So if I divide through this by the c, notice the c goes away here. We get b over c here, we get a over c, and dividing zero by anything is just zero. So that's how we get here. And now let's go ahead and do a little bit of renaming, right? So I'm gonna define this negative a to be capital A over C and negative B to be capital B over C. Basically, I'm just changing my variables. Again, they're just constants here, but I'm changing these because it looks a little bit slicker now, right? And so I can go ahead and rearrange this. I rearrange this because these are now negatives. I move them to the other side, right? I add them to the other side. And so I get Z minus Z sub zero is equal to A times X minus X sub zero plus B uh, times y minus y sub zero. So we're getting it to look a lot like our formula up here, right? That's our goal is to make uh, the tangent plane look like this formula. So the question then is what are these a's and these b's? We hope that they're the partial derivatives if this theorem is true. Okay, well now let's go ahead and do one of these restrictions, right? We need the curve of intersection between, you know, our surface and x equals x sub zero, whatever that point happens to be. Well, if you do that, if you set that equal, then this part goes away and you just have z minus our z point is equal to b times y minus our y point. And right, well, this needs to be a tangent line, right? That's again, back up here, right? So tangent lines, these curves are tangent lines. So if this is a tangent line, well then this is the slope right here. And the slope of that tangent line needs to be, well, the y partial derivative. That's the only way that it's a tangent line, right? Because again, x is gone, x is held constant in this case. So we need the y tangent line. Again, if I go back to my picture here, and let's maybe go ahead and toggle this and go back to this one, for instance. Again, x is being held constant, right? And we need the slope of this curve at this point. Well, it needs to be this tangent line, right? So it needs to be the y partial derivative. That's the definition of partial derivatives back from 14.3. Okay, likewise, if we were to set, instead of x equaling the x point, x sub zero, if we set y equal the y point, right? So we already got what b has to be equal. We can get that a has to be the x partial derivative. Right, the partial derivative with, with respect to x. And so therefore, we can substitute those in, and we get the formula that we declared was the formula of the tangent line. All right, so that's how this proof goes. Of course, in this class, we're very interested about being able to apply these things to specific examples. So now I'd like to go ahead and apply this to this uh, problem here. So find the equation of the tangent line through this surface at the point 2, negative 1, negative three. So let's go ahead and maybe set up. The first step would be right z minus z sub zero. So in this case, the z point here is negative three. So z minus negative three, so that's gonna be plus three, is equal to, and I'll just go ahead and do f sub x at two negative one times x minus the x point plus the y partial derivative, again, evaluated at two negative one, right, at the x sub zero and the y sub zero, times y minus the y point. So that's negative one, so this y minus negative one will be plus one. So we get something like this. So you can see, in order to find the equation of this tangent plane, all that's left is, well, I need the x partial derivative and the y partial derivative evaluated at this point. So let's go ahead and do that, so f sub x. So let's see, when I take the derivative with respect to x, this goes away, that's zero. And then here I would have, what, negative four x, and I would have plus one, derivative of this. Okay, f sub y. 
Well, I'll have 6y. And when I take the derivative of y, well, this is constant, this is constant, so that all goes away. And now we're going to evaluate at the point 2, negative 1. So when x is equal to 2, well, I'll have negative 8 plus 1, that'll be negative 7. And when, again, x is 2 and y is negative 1, so we'll have negative 6 here. So now let's go ahead and plug those in. So I have z plus 3 is equal to negative 7, x minus 2, plus, or really I guess this is going to be negative 6, so let's go ahead and do minus 6, y plus 1. And now I'm going to go ahead and check here in just a second, right? I'm going to have us verify our answer. So let's maybe simplify this down a little bit. So z plus 3 is equal to negative 7 plus 14 minus 6 y. Oops, negative 7x. Uh, let's see, theoretically there's a way that I can if I hold down this button here. I can move it. It didn't work great, but okay. <laughs> negative 7x plus 14. There we go. Minus 6y minus 6. So let's see, uh, I'll do z equals, and I'll have 14 minus 6, so that would be 8, and I'm going to subtract 3 from that, so that we're going to have 5. 5 minus 7x minus 6y. And that's the equation for my tangent plane. And again, actually, uh, when you're doing your homework or when you're doing quizzes or exams, for me it's a lot nicer if you actually give me this answer up here. So we're about to check it. That's why we kind of simplified it down. But actually, I like to see this answer because it's very clear. I can see kind of your whole idea. What is your uh, z point? What is your x point? What is your y point? And then what are your partial derivatives? So that actually, this is a lot easier for me to check. I would prefer you give your answers actually like this. All right, but like I said, let's go ahead and check. All right, so I went ahead and I graphed some stuff for us already. So I graphed our function 3y squared minus 2x squared plus x, and I graphed our point of interest, 2, negative 1, negative 3. So we can see that, first of all, this point is on the surface, and we can also now kind of see that our surface is one of these maybe hyperbolic paraboloids, right? So that's kind of, it looks like one of these saddles almost. All right, so yes, the point does lie on the surface. So that's a good start. So now I'm going to go ahead and select, and I'm going to add to this graph, right, another function. And I would like that to be, right, our uh, tangent plane, theoretically. So I think our equation, what was 5 minus uh, 7x minus 6y. Let me go ahead and double check that really quick. 5 minus 7x minus 6y, good. And, oh. It came back up and it already graphed it for us. Let's go ahead and maybe turn off the transparency here. So this is very interesting, right? So you can see that it contains this point, the same 2, negative 1, negative 3, and it does seem to just barely skim the graph at this point. So you can see that this does seem re reasonable. Ooh, that's too fast. This does seem reasonable as a tangent plane, right? It just barely skims. You can kind of see that, that tangent plane almost showing through on both sides of the surface. And of course, we could upgrade, you know, maybe the number of grid lines and stuff to get a better picture, but then it's going to render a little bit slowly, right? So if I do this, and maybe for this one back here, if I upgraded the number of grid lines to 60, you can kind of start to see again uh, that yeah this looks like a good tangent plane again it seems to be coming through just barely on both sides it seems to skim that surface at this point so that is our tangent plane all right and one reason right we like tangent planes just like back in calculus one right to calc one we like tangent lines because they were good at approximating the curve now tangent planes will be good at approximating the surface near this point. So this brings up the idea of linearization. So the linear function whose graph is the tangent plane is called the linearization of our function, or surface in this case, at AB, and is given by, well, it's just the equation of the tangent plane. Just like back in Calc 1, it was just the equation of the tangent line. So it goes l of xy is equal to our z point, which is the function evaluated at a, b, 
plus the x derivative of f evaluated at a b times x minus a the a the x point plus the y derivative evaluated at a b times y minus the y point in this case b so notice i mean this is the same thing uh, except for, right, instead of at x naught, y naught, and z naught, right, we are specifying just a and b. So instead of y naught here, we have b. Instead of x naught here, we have a. Likewise, we're evaluating at a's and b's. That's actually, I like this more. It's a little bit cleaner, right? And the above statement says, right, that the linearization L of x, y is approximately equal to the surface. So, and the big thing here is that so long as x, y is near a, b, right? So we need the function near a, b. All right, so that's why this is sometimes referred to as the linear approximation. Or tangent plane approximation for our function at a, b. So, that's it. For our definitions and whatnot, I have one kind of more bonus information for you here, right? Uh, back in 4.2, right, when we gave you the definition, or I, sorry, the equation really for the tangent plane, right? We said that f has to have continuous partial derivatives. And, and this is very important. Uh, and although it pretty much always happens in this class, right? So we're not gonna have any situations where, that, where we're gonna be asked to calculate out, uh, you know, an equation for the tangent plane and we can't do it. Right? But there are harder situations and more difficult math out there where maybe you don't have continuous partial derivatives. And actually, this book has a really nice section on differentiability uh, in multivariables. So it's, uh, uh, right, it's a little bit more than just that the partial derivatives exist. Right? So differentiability is something more complicated in multivariables. Uh, so if you have any interest in this, I recommend reading it. Like I said, it's a very nice section. It's on pages 941 and 942 in our book. Uh, and it ends with this important theorem Again, this won't really come up too much in our class, but it is nice, right? So if the partial derivatives x, sorry, f sub x and f sub y exist near a, b, and are continuous at a, b itself, then f is differentiable uh, at the point a, b. So again, this will not come up so much in this class, uh, but it is like an important theorem in mathematics, what it means for a function to be differentiable uh, at a point. So this is very nice. All right, that's it for this section. I'll see you guys in class.